Welcome to The Riff Show on TGN, the TV network on YouTube. This is Togrim, and in this episode, I will be talking about my MASH melee healer spec as well as the Valor normalization in the most recent patch. In the patch, the amount of Valor on the rank 2, rank 4, and rank 6 gear was all standardized to have the same amount. And I think this was a good change. Basically, it means that players have the same amount of PvP mitigation, but as you rank up, you do get access to uh, much better weapons and better stats. So um, players will have the same, roughly the same amount of mitigation, but the higher ranked players will still enjoy the advantage of being able to deal more damage, more healing, and have more hit points. So in this Codex Warfront, I queued up with a guildie named Frizzlepot. He is a Warlock Mage, and initially we got rolled over at Codex. So we come down to Statue after a res wave, and we're just trying to hold the node. I'm trying to find a healer here. He's casting Healing Grace. So I come over and interrupt him with Crushing Wave. A knockback will cut off a cast time spell, and I'm staying on him so that we can burn him down. Then I notice this other player here is trying to cap our flag, so I tap him with a water jet. And that's one of the strengths of this build. I have spammable melee and ranged instant cast attacks, and I'm getting um, pounded on by two warriors, so I, I punt one warrior away from me with Crushing Wave, and then this other warrior, I'm kiting back and forth through him, and I apply Humility the ranged snare on him. So I'm kiting two warriors right now at the same time. Um, one of them still trying to follow me, and then we find this Warlock over here and we burn him down. So we're just barely managing to hold on to the uh, statue node and we are um, tactically down so the score is very close but the Defiant side has Codex and Scope and as you probably know Codex gives five points per tick uh, whereas the other nodes only give three each. So there's a rogue up here. I go ahead and get perpendicular to him and then knock him off the cliff with Crushing Wave. So if you want to knock people off a cliff you want to try to bring them down so that your team can focus fire them. If you punt a player face up that's on the cliff, they're just going to get knocked backwards onto the cliff and nothing's going to happen to them. But you can cut sideways like I did there, take the angle, knock them off the cliff. And right here you can see I'm spamming, uh, I'm spamming Crushing Wave again because I was hoping to knock that cleric off the cliff. But I got CC'd by a ward. I missed the opportunity. We do manage to burn that healer down. And I use Glacial Shield my bubble and try to bubble cap this flag, but the warrior interrupts me. So you got to clear this warrior first before we'll be able to take the flag. So if you haven't seen on my blog um, or on the Rift Cleric forum, I've posted a thread about my you MASH Melee this. Healer guide, so you can read all about that the specs mechanics and the playstyle there. So I managed to cap the Codex flag there with help from all these people, and then I do the same thing, get sideways and then punt one of these players down where we can burn him down. And I happen to have got a healer, which is great. So I use uh, Interdict there to help interrupt his casting, we burn him down. And Interdict has got a really short 10 second cooldown, so it's a great ability to use that and Crushing Wave to control cast times by your opponents. So, we're about to cap Codex, we're down 3 nodes though. You notice right there I cut behind the player who's riding by to keep out of his line of sight, and then I tuck in tight to this rock here by scope so that they can't see me. And that's a really important thing, you know, players usually only see the area right in front of their character, so when I saw that horseman coming by, I cut around behind him to stay out of his line of sight. Now, this, in my opinion, is the most critical event that happens in the match. Frizzlepot and I come down, we cap scope in a few seconds here, and we manage to hold it badly outnumbered for a minute. So check this out. Right now, this is two versus three. They've got two DPS and one healer, and we're applying pressure to this healer. And Frizzlepot and I are not necessarily expecting to stay to be able to hold this node indefinitely. We're just trying to buy time so that you know they won't get points from scope, uh, whereas our team will. So this is now two versus four, and I've got a warrior beating on me. Frizzlepot's going to come over in a moment and la um, land a really nicely timed fear bomb to disperse them. And meanwhile, I'm staying on this healer. Okay, I've got two melees beating on me now, and so to gap them, I use battle charge. And that's a great ability. My health gets really low. I pop reprieve for the burst heal, and then I notice a rogue over here trying to get the flag, so I come over and smack him with a jolt to interrupt that. So this is now a two versus seven. You know, as I said, we're really badly outnumbered, but we're still holding on to scope, accruing points, and relieving the Defiance thin at the other three notes. So you'll see in a second here, we drop, but we just cap Statue, and in a moment we'll assault one of the other nodes. So, like I said, we've managed to buy um, a minute at this node. You can see how many red players are there, just with two of us holding on to the flag. Okay, so we lose scope there, but we manage to take Codex. And I see a warrior up on a rock, so I get and, and punt him down. The reason why I'm doing this is the Defiance are now split up among their res waves. So we know that when they come to a node, they're not coming 
they're trickling in, in threes and in twos and threes as opposed to fives and sixes at a time. So we're trying to kill these hill, um, these DPS as fast as possible before their help can arrive. You can tell by the score we're still down by 130 points and they just assaulted statue. So we're down in terms of the number of nodes. I see a warlock free casting in the back, so I close the gap with battle charge, interrupt a soul purge with interdict. And I'm trying to strafe around behind him so that I can reduce his chance to parry. Um, now, again, granted, against the caster, they can't really, uh, they don't have much in the way of parry as far as percentage. But against melee classes, you know, warriors and rogues, they tend to have um, very high avoidance stats. So it's really important to always strafe behind targets whenever possible. It's a really good habit. And if you're still learning how to strafe, you're looking for material, you can see a link that I'm posting here in this video to my strafing keybindings guide. It is one of the most important things to learn how to do well in PvP. I'm on this rogue here who I picked who was a, a low health target so I know Squishy and I drop him there with a 763 crit from Jolt. Now we've only got Codex, we're down by over 150 points so we've got to cap another node. And normally I wouldn't be pushing players like this away from a node but we're down so what um, I'm hoping to do is support the DPS around me with my heals and burn down these players so we can keep the Defiance split in terms of their res timers. Keep them having to go back to the graveyard and then come back out. You can see they just got uh, reinforcements probably from a res wave or from vault. So we're having you know trouble getting to the flag but we're working our way down there. And given that we're outnumbered here, there are four friendly players and about six enemy or seven enemy players, we're just trying to bottle them up as much as possible and I'm hoping that the other players in this warfront will go pick up the other nodes. So I'm kiting as much as possible. I knock back a warrior who's on me there. Um, I already used my range snare. I use battle charge there to create a gap from the melees that are beating on me. So this spec really has excellent passive mitigation, undispellable passive mitigation, and incredible mobility. This is the thing I like about the spec. You can see basically in combat I'm moving non-stop, but this is really helpful to apply continue pressure to targets and also to gap people who would otherwise kill me. Now this guy is casting mortality here. Um, and so I immediately cast Interdict to interrupt it, and then we drop him. And you can see I switch targets periodically as I'm trying to test and see which players um, are healers and which ones have the lower stats. So if they're two DPS and one of them has a significantly smaller yeah, yeah. HP pool, that's the one I'm going to burn down because they tend to be lower ranked and more squishy. Yeah, so my buddy Frizzlepot here just uh, came down to scope and joined me. He was helping to hold Codex. So we've effectively managed to bottle the scope players, and you can see that I get a flag cap there on scope in the midst of this mass fighting and uh, this is a very common uh, problem in PvP. People tend to get tunnel vision and if you know, just one of those defiant players to turn around and just saw us at the flag, they could have easily AoE'd us and kept us off the flag. But instead now we've capped three nodes and we're in the process of capping scope. And I notice there's a Dominator E here who is draining my mana so I go ahead and close the gap to him using battle charge and then I pop both melee um, regen sorry, mana regen abilities, purpose, and aceless ice, and I get my mana up back pretty high. Uh, my friend Frizzlepot there did just die about 10 seconds ago, and there was a mistake I made. When he came down, I should have picked him as my Righteous Mandate target, and that way I could have used my Reprieve to give him a huge burst heal. Another thing too right now, watching the footage, I notice I am debuffed uh, by the Dom traitorous influence which will sap your mana whenever you use an ability so uh, thankfully the spec does have a cleanse in cleansing waters and I should have used it as soon as possible generally you know as soon as you can hear that sound effect from the dominator debuff it has a very distinct high-pitched whine you want to move that as soon as possible now that cleric was just casting healing grace it's a two second spell and I waited till his bar was about 70 percent full and then interrupted it with interdict and basically by doing so I wasted almost two seconds of his cast time so he doesn't get any healing um, and is forced to start over again and we managed to drop him. Now we were losing this match 800 to 600, you saw that in the score a couple minutes ago, but we've almost managed to close the gap. We have Codex which is the best node and we've got one of the other nodes, Translation Scope. We're trying as much as possible to bottle them up at Scope just to buy time so we can increase our lead. And I head back up to Codex because it had been flipped probably by a rogue and then both Statue and Scope have been assaulted, so we need to get one of them back and make the decision to go back over to Scope, and I asked Fizzlepot to come over with me. And I just glanced really quickly, you can see I used Mouse Look to look at both nodes, and you know my gut feel was that we're going to have an easier time getting Scope back because it seemed like fewer people. And then right there, Fizzlepot uh, Fear Bombed the Warrior so that I could try to cap the flag, but unfortunately I got CC'd by a Rogue. 
it's either the rogue or the warrior. But anyway, you, know, you should try to um, pair up. If you're with people, try to coordinate your CCs with your flag caps. And, you know, if we had okay, managed to execute that, it would have looked really cool. But uh, it still allows me to talk about it in the video. So we managed to complete a huge comeback to win this match. And I got to give Tryon a huge thumbs up for their changes for the Valor normalization. I think it's helped to make PvP much more competitive, especially for players at lower rank who before frankly were cannon fodder and easy to kill. I finished tops in healing, Fizzlepot finishes tops in damage and leads the way with 20 killing blows, and I did have 5 total flag caps in the match, which is more than anyone else, 4 flag assaults and 1 defense. If you're interested in finding out more about my MASH melee healer spec, you can check out the link to my guide in the description for this video. And I've also provided a link to Disby's Warlock spec, which Fristlepot has been using in the description. If you have any questions, let me know.